Welcome back to the channel everybody. Today is hopefully going to be our last day of harvest preparation. We got to get the grain cart out, hooked up, run through everything on that, make sure it's ready to go for this fall. And then we usually keep our sickle mower back behind the grain cart. So we finished up mowing road ditches last night. So we'll unhook that behind there until next summer when we need it again. And then there's one quick thing I got to do over at the bend site, which shouldn't take long and everything should be ready to go by the end of today for harvest. Got the tractor, our 8R340 hooked up to the grain cart. These two are gonna be together all fall. This thing is an absolute beauty. I love this grain cart. I just wish it held a little bit more bushels. It only holds 1100 bushels. Wish it was a little bit bigger for our operation. So we'll get this out, hook everything up, grease it, and make sure everything's gonna run on it. The combine's still tucked in over there. We're gonna see if we can sneak this thing out the door without having to take the combine out here. Figure we got the room in the shop, we might as well bring the grain cart in. That way we can work on it inside here. To get the grain cart set up to the tractor, I gotta hook up all of the hydraulics and electrical connections. So I took pictures of everything of how I had it set up last fall. So now I just gotta match the colors to the hydraulic outlets and run the hoses. And hopefully everything should work same as last year. I got the auger, the bogey wheels, the spout, all greased on the grain cart, so it should be ready to go. Except this one does have an automatic greaser option. So if I fill this with grease, which I'm about to, it'll send this grease down to the bogey wheels in the tracks throughout the day. So I'm gonna fill this thing. It's only half full now, fill it full of grease. Now that all the hydraulics and electrical parts are hooked up on the grain cart, we're gonna back it out and we're gonna double check that the auger and the gate and all the other hydraulics are working. Just wanted to come to the other side here, double check that my scale readout that I put on the side of the grain cart is working, and it looks like it is. I just gotta zero the scale in there. Put that on there for the combine operator so he knows how many pounds are on the wagon. this stuff ready for harvest doesn't get you excited I don't know it will because I sure am getting antsy to start driving some of this equipment we've been working on now that the grain carts out of the way we're gonna take this disc mower here that dad washed up this morning and we're gonna hopefully park that in the back of the shed here usually it takes us a while to figure out how to get the three-point down all the way so see how long it takes us this year Exactly what I expected. We got the mower down on the pallets. Still can't figure out how to get the three point down all the way. It took a while, but we eventually got the disc mower unhooked and tucked back into that corner. Then I parked the 8285R in front of it. We use this tractor this fall to haul some wagons. And if it ever starts raining, we might end up using it to pull a semi or two out of the field. I almost forgot that I still got to grease our Case 875 Deep Ripper. I was cutting through this shed and realized that I still have to grease it. So this will run behind all of our corn stock ground. It will be pulled by our 9620R. And I really do like this red tillage tool. It's got a nice basket on the back that breaks up a lot of the corn stalks. Unfortunately, with how dry it's been, this thing's gonna pull really, really hard again because the ground's gonna be really firm. But I'm gonna check over everything on this. That way, it'll be ready to go. Each one of the disc gangs on the ripper has a bearing 
and each one of those needs to be greased. So I've already gone through one whole tube of grease. So I'm going to swap that out for a fresh tube of grease. There you go. That's the look of another full tube of grease going in. I think each tube is right around eight bucks. So already eight bucks in just on grease. Put her back on here. We actually have three grease guns on the farm just because we like to do a lot of preventative maintenance. So we got one in each of our main sheds. So this one will be used a lot this fall. And I believe we have 60 tubes of grease that we just purchased to get us through this fall too. There's grease zerks up here on the wings that I got to grease. And rather than bring a tractor up here and hook it up and get the hydraulics hooked up, that way I can fold the wings out and hopefully able to reach the zerks with the ladder. That way I don't have to open the other door and don't have to hook the tractor up. Sometimes like all you want to do is run. The ripper is now ready to go. I usually don't get to run this a lot in the fall. We have a hired guy that likes running it and is really good at running it. So other than a couple weekends where he's off, I'll run it. But I'll definitely have some footage of this thing going this fall, as well as probably some breakdowns on this thing because of how dry it is. Now we're down here at the bend site. We got the blower pipe that was still plugged from earlier this spring. So we're gonna kick on the blower and see if that comes loose. The reason that pipe got plugged is because when we did our summer grain bend project, the contractor called and said that our old bend that was sitting here needed to be cleaned out by Monday. And rather than having to auger it into a truck and then having to keep unload the truck, I used our blower and accidentally ran a little bit too much corn down. And that resulted in that pipe plugging on the large corn bin. I tapped at the hammer and the corn is stuck at this 90 degree turn to go up the bin. So as long as that gets out, we should have corn falling down into this bin if it's gonna work. Let's see if kicking on the blower here is gonna solve all of our problems. That right there is a sight I like to see and a huge sigh of relief that the corn came in the bin because that means our pipe is unplugged. Thankfully that worked. It was only a 10 to 20 minute job. Just kicked on the blower and that was enough pressure going through those tubes to force out that little bit of corn that was in there. So those are all ready to go for this fall. Now I came to our blower shed, which houses our blower and our unload for our dry bin, which takes all the corn out of our dry bin, out of this unload. And then like I was just doing, it forces it through those pipes outside. And I noticed that this pulley here doesn't run true. I'll run it here so you guys can see. We're obviously not gonna run it like that all fall because the unload auger will chew through the tube. So I'm gonna end up taking everything off, that way I can pull that flighting out and see if I got damaged when we had the bend crew take it out, that way we could swing that other bend into the place of our new dry bend. The only way for us to get the flighting out of the unload and out of the bend is dad drilled a hole in here a couple years ago and replaced the flighting. So we're gonna end up taking that piece out and then some of the steel outside and we'll hopefully slide it right through this little hole. That way we can expect the flighting. able to get the shaft outside of this hole here in the wall yeah, we're gonna squeeze right shaft. between there <laughs> and then see if it's straight or if it got bent a little bit is it hitting on the outside or you out no we're money huh i'm good here Here's the flighting that we believe might be bent. 
So we'll have that checked over to make sure it's not bent. Otherwise it could be the transition from where the bend and the air lock might not be completely level across. So that might be causing a little bit of friction between this flighting and the pipe as well. So we're gonna have to keep inspecting, see what our problem is. What we're noticing on the flighting here is these little chinks, as you can see there, and that might be what's catching on the unload and making quite a rattling sound. So we're gonna mark them all. Did yeah, you mark this yeah, one? Yeah. And the bearing did actually go out on the unload to the blower here. The bend crew caught that, so we replaced that. But if I were guessing, we're also gonna have to have this flighting serviced. That way it'll run smooth and won't end up ruining the tube inside the bin. Pretty much what I expected. I was hoping to get the grain site checked over and everything ready to go today. And it should only took 20 minutes. But now here I am gonna get this trailer ready to get that flighting brought in. So it's gonna turn into an all day project now. Oh. This little forklift attachment we have here, it works really good for moving around trailers, wagons, our seat tenders. Because rather than having to hook everything up to a pickup or one of the tractors, we can just whip out the forklift and move stuff around the yard real easy, like this. Oh, two inches to the north. Now that the trailer is hooked up, got the forklift ready, Gonna grab that flighting, set it on here, strap her down, and it'll be ready to go to take to the machine shop. I got the flighting strapped onto the trailer. Figure I'll show you guys how I check to make sure my straps are strong enough. Give a one, two pull test. Yep, those will hold. I'll bring this there in the morning and see what they think of those little chinks I saw in the flighting and double check that shaft at the end to make sure that's straightened out. Slight change of plans. I called the machine shop to ask them what time to drop that flighting off in the morning and they said to drop it off tonight rather than tomorrow morning. So I ran that over there and they thought it was wore down up to a quarter an inch in some of those chink marks that I showed you and it was bent a little bit near the end of the flighting. So their recommendation was just to replace the whole flighting Unfortunately, they won't have time for two weeks to make a new flighting. So I guess hopefully we're not in the field in the next two weeks. Otherwise, we're gonna be in quite the bind here. Getting that auger rebuilt is now the final thing on my to-do list before harvest comes. So I'll have to hook this trailer back up in two weeks to go pick that up and put that back together. Otherwise, we're sitting really good. Harvest should be here in the next 10 days. So hopefully we can get that auger back a little bit sooner. But that's gonna be it for today's video. Thanks so much everyone for watching and we'll see you in the next one.